Thank you, Council. Would you sign in, please? Ms. Holly? All councillors present with Councillor Vigil requesting to be um, in attendance later this evening and Councillor Stefano requesting to be excused. Thank you, Ms. Holly. We'll move on to the agenda approval. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Yes, Mayor. Um, staff would request that we remove two of the consent items. That is C1A and C1B, and that those would be placed under the public works. We'll place that under public works. Um, that would be B. Would that be fine? Right after the public hearing? Yes, sir. Okay. And with that, Mayor, I'll make the motion that we approve the agenda as amended and excuse uh, Councillor Stefano, and I believe uh, Councillor uh, Behill will be here with us here shortly. Thank you. I've got a motion. To, and I'll second. I've got a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Start voting, please. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Holly. We'll move on to um, citizen comment. Alamosa City Council welcomes your comments. Citizens wishing to speak may obtain and complete a speaker card through the city clerk at the start of the meeting. Anyone else out there that want to complete a card? I have three cards this evening. We'll start out with Mr. Chris Lopez. Would you please approach the podium? State your name and address if you wish, sir. You have three minutes. Thank you, council members. My name is Chris Lopez. I live at 825 Third Street. I just wanted to come down this evening to uh, extend my invitation to all of you to join us on Saturday, September 30th for the 25th anniversary celebration of Boys and Girls Clubs of the San Luis Valley. We previously extended invitations to all of you through uh, the city clerk's office, so I trust you receive that. Uh, and I just wanted to come down and encourage you to join us. It's going to be a great evening. We have Jackie joyner Kersey, who's uh, labeled the greatest athlete of her generation, three-time Olympic gold medalist, five-time um, medalist overall. She'll be joining us that evening. I just wanted to come down and encourage you to show up. We have a lot to celebrate. It's been 25 years, uh, and I hope that all of you will find some time to come down and spend the evening with us. And that was my only purpose this evening. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Ms. Judith Greitz. Thank you for being here, Ms. Greitz. I hope I said that properly. Yes, you did. Thank you. My name is Judith Greitz, and I live at 8015 South Highway 285. I do not live in the city, but I own property in the city. My concern continues to be about marijuana, because even though I don't live in the city, I'm still very much affected by what goes on in the city. Dr. Wiley and others have continually and emphatically talked about the detrimental health of marijuana to children and adults, as well as the social economic impact that completely outweighs the additional tax revenue. Cities such as Pueblo have reported a tremendous increase in homelessness, robberies, insecurity among citizens. The problem Alamosa already has in regard to homelessness was just recently reported in the Valley Courier. The city police are not looking forward to even more availability of marijuana in the city. It is already available to the people that need or want it. I realize that it is now up to the voters in Alamosa to make this decision. So I'm saying to the voters, why not make Alamosa the one city in Colorado that does not allow marijuana in the city and keep Alamosa from going to pot? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
Mr. David Broyles. Thank you for being here, Mr. Broyles. Thank you, Mayor and City Councilman. I, I appreciate some time. Um, I ask you a simple question. What's the greatest need in our city? The greatest need in our city is leadership that have vision. I looked at your vision statement and it's pretty good. Yeah. By the way, you have a couple of typos in there. First of all, you refer, you, you refer to Adams State University as ASC. And then down in the community, you say to make Alamos a livable. A livable what? You might want to work on that. But I want to talk about two points in your vision statement. You say our mission in, is to enhance the quality of life for our, our residents, visitors, and businesses. That's noble and work to reduce crime and create safe environment for our residents and visitors. I think that's good too. So I ask you, how are you doing with your vision statement? In June, you voted five to two for the marijuana ordinance. And I, and I saw special attention to where it says, it says, whereas this circumstance can result in significant health and public safety concerns. What if there's a fire? when they tried to extract, extract that THC. Who's it going to affect? The people in the house? How about the neighbors? How about me as a citizen? Do I, have to, do I have to smell the marijuana being grown in my neighbor's yard? How does that add to my quality of living? I do applaud Mayor Lucero and Councilman Stefano for having the leadership and courage to say no. There's too much we don't know about this issue. Now, according to road, to road Snack, and I didn't find this on my own, this pointed out to me, they studied 103 cities in Colorado with a population greater than 5,000. Alamosa is ranked as the third worst city in Colorado. Why? Here's what reporttoday.net says. Alamosa is a mess. It has a horrible crime rate. Alamosa has the second highest crime rate in Colorado. Felonies are up in, Colorado, in Alamosa between 40 and 55 percent. I am more likely to be a victim of a property crime in Alamosa than most any other city in Colorado. What's the cause of this? I know it's drugs. It's also because of unemployment. It's also because Alamosa has not dedicated the sufficient resources to fight crime. I ask you again, what's your vision for Alamosa? It's you that control the, re the reputation for Alamosa. I understand that heroin and meth are the biggest contributors to our crime rate. However, marijuana will contribute. Use your judgment. If we have 18 marijuana, marijuana shops in Alamosa, because at last city council they want to have a shop next to every liquor store, I count them up, there's 18. How's that going to affect the safety and well-being of our citizens. Mayor, let me, just, let me just interrupt here. We are, our, our timer is malfunctioning, so I've <laughs> put a countdown timer on the screen, and we're at zero on the three minutes. <laughs> is that Mr. it, Mayor? Mayor? Can you wrap it up in a few seconds, sir? Well, I'm asking, where's your vision? And do you fully appreciate that we are the custodian of, of 6,000 college students from ages from, from ages from college age down to elementary? What's, what's your thinking about that? Well, to cut it short, my vision is to dedicate the resources that will reduce drug dependence and drug dependence, drug addiction and drug dependence and crime. My vision would be to rebrand our reputation. My vision is to stand above the other cities in Colorado. My vision is to tell Colorado that the sale of, the sale of pot and illegal drugs in, in the city limits of Alamos is prohibited. Like Mrs. Greid said, let's be the one city, the one gem in southern Colorado that prohibits the, the sale of marijuana and prohibits the sale of any illegal drugs within the city limits of Alamosa. We think about economic development. It starts here. Good businesses, good citizens, and good, and good residents do not want to move into a drug-infested, high-crime area. Therefore, I end where I started. What is your vision? 
for stopping the crime rate in Alamosa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burroughs. Staff, do we have any follow-up? Ms. Heather? No, sir. We will then move on to ceremonial items. Tonight we have the Mayor's Art Contest. Ms. Holly or Ms. Heather? Oh, we've got Jolene in the back. Hello, Ms. Jolene. Jolene, if, can you go to the microphone so we can, everyone will hear you. <laughs> Good evening, so um, we had the Mayor's Art Contest last week and we have two winners. We have Reese, who is from fifth grade, and we have Amelia, who is in third grade. And they are here this evening, I believe. Would you guys like to come forward? All right, and what is your name? Amelia. So we have Amelia here, and she won, uh, with her con art contest, she won a gift card to Hobby Town. Both of them did. So. Very good. Okay. Very good. Miss Jolene, would, right. did you present those to her? Maybe you'd like a photo. Or, yeah. or I'm not sure if Mayor of the Council and you want to come down <laughs> and do a presentation. Do you, council, please join me. I think Jolene has the camera to take the picture, not be in the picture. <laughs> Mr. Crane, did you want to join us? Mr. Jim, um, James Crane, and he is the elementary art teacher. Thank you very much. We've got a couple of introductions this evening as well. We've got the introduction of a GIS technician, and I will allow Mr. Pat to do that for us. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is good news tonight. We've got two people to introduce, uh, two people new to Public Works. We've been looking for them for a long time, and we're very grateful that they're here. First is Sunaina Wahi. She is our new GIS person. She's a recent graduate of Adams State. Uh, I was a little disappointed. She only speaks five languages. I was I was trying to trying to hit seven with that job, but uh, um, she's she's uh, she's already proven her value, she's, she's doing a good job in her spare time, she's an Olympic runner, and um, we're just, we're grateful to have her and, and excited for what she's, what she's gonna do here. Welcome. Good evening, thank you. 
Um, I'm very excited to be working here with the city of Alamosa. Um, I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm learning a lot and I'm very eager. Um, and I'm just so happy to be a part of this team. Very good. Welcome. Uh, Councillor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Sunina, thank you for being here. You're also an accomplished pepper eater, so I, I Pat missed that. She is, I, I missed that. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes. But thank you for being here. We're really excited to have you. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Coleman. Sunina, it's a pleasure to have you on our team. I tell you that. Uh, I followed your career at ASU, and uh, you did great things there, and I'm quite sure you're going to do many great things here at the city, so I wish you much success. Thank you. And if council or any of the other city departments want to have a want to have a race against Public Works, we're we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Hensley, I have known Sanena obviously since um, her being at Adams State, and I think this is a great example of when we have great talent and somebody who excels at Adams State, and then being able to have a position that we can keep some of those Adams State yeah. graduates and those great students so they, they can become part of our community and add. So I think this is just a great example of this and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Councillor Diego. I too, uh, we have a great family here with the city and you'll, you'll see as you visit with all the other departments, it's a great group and you'll, you'll enjoy it. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess they covered it all, but you're a great addition to our, our team. Welcome. And uh, unfortunately, Pat's going to be skadoodling. And so, uh, wow, it, it's great that, uh, that we have someone uh, that uh, can at least pinpoint where we're at. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Pat? Well, that's, I have Daniel next. Thank you, Sunita. Thank you very much. So Dan is our new our new planner. He's uh, his hmm? Dan. Dan. I'm sorry. I keep calling him Daniel. Uh, Dan's our new planner and, and development specialist. He he has over 20 years of planning experience. He was the Summit County planner. Uh, has worked in the city of Durango. Uh, most recently came to us from the city of Cameron, Wyoming. Uh, he he brings a lot of depth to the department that that in in all reality we've never had. Um, he's he's already telling me things I've been doing wrong, and that's that's good to know. Um, so here's we're again we're we're very excited to have him. It's it's he's going to add a whole new a whole new facet to the service that we can provide, and uh, his his experience is going to be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Welcome. Mm, thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to making my contribution to the quality of life here in town and helping you. Do your jobs better. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dan. Um, I've got over 25 years of experience in land use planning and consulting. I, my undergraduate degree is in urban and regional planning, and I have a master's in landscape architecture from Utah State University. I've worked primarily in uh, resort and tourism environments. And I have just short of 10 years of experience in land use consulting. And I do a lot of different things in a lot of different places. I've worked uh, across the United States and Western Canada. And I've done everything from writing land use codes to designing small parks and landscapes for single family homes. Um, I was one of the people on the, the uh, design team that designed the River Run Village in Keystone. So mm -hmm. I, depth and breadth is <laughs> what I've got. Very good. Um, Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Mayor. Dan, welcome to Alamosa. Um, one, just one quick question as a planner. Uh, when you look at Alamosa, what is one thing you would um, say that could enhance uh, our community? I think you guys are doing a great job. I wouldn't, I think we uh, need to move forward with the recommendations and the, uh, the new comprehensive plan. I'm looking forward to the opportunities on that. And I think you guys had great vision in uh, putting that plan together. And I think it sets a, a real high bar for the, the community to attain. And I think 
we're well on our way there. Great answer, and thank you so much for looking at the comprehensive plan. It is a great uh, thing to model. Appreciate it. Oh, Councilman, Councilwoman Hensley, sorry about that. It's okay. Dan, welcome. And I'm really excited. I think this is awesome. We are at this point with our vision with our city, the CIP plan, um, all of this information that we gathered, and it's a very exciting time for us in the city of Alamosa. And so it's a great time and opportunity to have you here and welcome aboard. I'm looking forward to your feedback and hearing things as we're growing and how to grow in the right way. Thank you. Councilman Grego. Also, uh, welcome, Dan. I, I know uh, Pat's been trying to fill these positions for a while now, and it's good to see that he's brought in some good quality, well people, <laughs> good quality people that will take the position and stuff. So welcome to the family. Thank you. Councillor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And Dan, I just wanted to say I'm really looking forward to hearing um, from you and the land use. I get really excited about that stuff, which I do think is weird um, a little, but I'm really excited to learn from you and um, hear where, where we're going and um, really appreciate your experience and expertise. So thanks for joining the team. Thanks. Very good. Dan, thank you for choosing Alamosa. You know, uh, planning makes for great results. And uh, we have, sounds like we have a great planner here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much for being here. Pat, thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to consent calendar A. The consent calendar allows multiple actions with one motion. Consent calendar A contains routine items which have been recommended for action by staff or advisory boards. Council may remove a consent calendar item for separate consideration. Tonight we have three. We moved C1A and C1B down to public works. So uh, I will entertain a motion on the approval of the minutes for September 6. Receive the August 2017 monthly reports and the city and attorney employment agreement. Councilor Daniel. Mayor, I move that we approve consent calendar A with the amendments previously mentioned. Councilman Coleman. I second. I've got a motion to second. Is there any further discussion on consent calendar A? Seeing none. Let me start voting, please. Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. We will now move on to regular business. Sir? Do we have a presentation? Let me see. I believe it's Alamosa. Okay, Alamo yes, students. regular. We've got a present, two presentations from outside agencies. We've got the Alamosa School Students Against Destructive Decisions, SAD, report on national conference and the two cause of presentation. So we'll start out with the Alamosa students. Please give us your names for the record, please. I'm Haley Morgan from the Alamosa Sad Club. I'm a sophomore this year. I'm Shanoa Candy, and I'm a sophomore at Alamosa High School. I'm Brianna Willis. I'm in middle school, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Cassie Willis, and I'm a freshman this year. Uh, so we're the Alamosa Sad Club, and we have others too, but we were able to go to this National Sad Conference. Um, my mom is our counselor, Heidi Morgan, and she took us, she, we went to Denver, and then we flew to Tampa, Florida, and we went to a National Sad Conference, and the Sad Conference was mostly about um, like decisions that kids make and destructive decisions that can like ruin their lives and so we uh, really impacted us and so we're going to just share a few things that really impacted us. So. Okay, at the SAD conference we Skyped a group of inmates and they each told us their story and how they ended up in prison. About 98 percent of the people ended up in prison because of drugs. The drug that led to most of their imprisonment 
was alcohol, whether it had to do with um, getting in a car drunk or picking up a weapon and causing someone their life. Well, we had the SAC conference, we had the speaker name of Alex Sheen. Alex Sheen is the founder because I said I would. Because I said I would is making a promise to herself that we know we would keep. He walked across Ohio to her house where three girls were held captive for 10 years. Plus, we were the only sad group in Colorado that went to the conference. So the because I said I would is just like to show the value of a promise and how much a promise can mean to people. And the more you keep the pro your promises, even your promises to yourself, the better off you're going to be. And I feel like it impacted us and made us want to be more trustworthy and keep all of our promises. Um, so also at the SAC conference, we were educated on drunk driving and distracted driving. <clears throat> And over there, we had a speaker, and he talked to us about how one day he went out on a bike with his friends, and there was a distracted driver that hit the group of bikers. And he said one second he was riding his bike, the next he's on the ground, and he could see his best friend lying beside him. So later he got to the hospital and found out that his best friend died on the scene. So it makes me think, what if my friends decide to go out and ride our bikes, because there's not a lot to do in Alamosa? Mm -hmm. And we went out to ride our bikes, and what if that was me or my best friend? So, yeah. So we have a few goals as a SAD group this year. And one of our goals is for our meetings, because we have SAD meetings, uh, the high school meets uh, Fridays at lunch. and. Um, Go ahead, oh. Okay. OMS meet, meets at 7.30 in the morning on Wednesdays. And so we had a few goals, and one of our goals was that everyone would feel welcome to come to our SAD group, That because we feel like a lot of people, they feel like they can't fit into groups, and they don't feel accepted, and our SAD group is going to be a club where everyone is accepted, even if you're the coolest kid or not the coolest kid. And Another one of our goals this year as a SAD group is to set up these activities because lots of times k teenagers, they don't have things that they feel like they can do and so they just go to that party and they take that drink because, well, that's what everyone else is doing, so why not? And so we were thinking we could have like a drug-free night, but we wouldn't label it drug-free because sometimes drug-free sounds like a lecture. And so it would just be like an activity that teenagers and people can come and they can hang out and it can be like a safe space where everyone just feels really welcome. So we'd like to thank you for your time. Well, thank you, ladies. Uh, Counselor Daniel. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> we, of course we do. <laughs> you guys aren't off the hook yet. So thank you for your leadership in your school. Oh my gosh. You guys don't know how important that is um, and going and learning and, and things like that. So thank you for doing that. Um, I really appreciate you know, wanting to make it a safe space and it sounds like you have some really good um, advisors and things like that. So thank you for doing that. Um, how big is your club in the high school and then how big is it in the junior high? So our high school club is about 20 members. Wow. So. And about 40 members for the OMS, sorry. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. I bet with that many members, you guys can get some really cool events going. Um, and I, I worked with a group once that told the adults not to be fun suckers. So we'll work really hard not to suck the fun out of your event. So go and have fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Councilor Hensley. You have truly inspired me. I think this is awesome. These are the positive changes we need. These little things. So what you're doing makes a huge difference. Um, 40 in OMS, so what that tells me is that's just going to continue to grow. And as you're going into high school, this will just continue to be a bigger and bigger project. I know with the high school group, it's also going to continue to grow. It's going to, with your positive energy, become the cool thing to do. And what's awesome about it for me is also how inclusive it is. And I just think that is great, too, because there are times where some people feel left out or they're even part of the cool group, but they don't, they feel like they're pretending they're the cool group, and maybe they don't feel like they belong as well. And so what I love about this is this is something that's welcoming to everybody. So I just want to thank you so much for you doing it, and keep up the hard work. And I'd love it if you'd check in with us again. 
sometime and let us know how things are going and what exciting stuff you've been doing. Very good. Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, congratulations, ladies. Um, it's amazing. You all represented the entire state of Colorado. Was it your SAG group? That is, that is truly amazing. Mm -hmm. What I like about what you're doing is that you're leading by example. Sometimes people don't go by what you say, they go by what they see and what they see you do. So I'm so glad that you all are leading by examples and I hope other students just like you follow in your footsteps. Keep up the great work. Councilman Griego. I too want to congratulate you. I'm so impressed the way you presented yourselves you know, and what you went through and that you, that you want to make a difference for all the kids. One day you might be sitting up here because you've made that difference and people listen to you and stuff. So do the great, get out there and visit with all, all these. There is a lot of kids out there that just need somebody to say hi to. So get out there and visit with them and just like they said, make this a big, big club. And thank you for wanting to make a big difference in our community. Absolutely. You know, you can start small by making a difference in your community, which makes a difference in the world. Um, being awesome comes from within, and you have the strength and fortitude. I can see it on your faces. I can see it in the determination that you have in dealing with one another and just being here today. You know, it, uh, you are definitely inspiring. You guys are not sad. You are <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll move on to the Tucasa presentation. This, this is. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here, um, Mayor Lucero. Thank you for the invitation to come and talk to you. And th um, thank you to all of the council members for allowing me to come in. I'm Patricia Lara. I am the executive director of Tucasa here in Alamosa and also the Children's Advocacy Center, which is a part of our program. I wanted to come here tonight just to give you an update about what's been going on with our program and what the future looks like as well. The city of Alamosa has always been a huge supporter of us um, in a lot of different ways and so we, we're really grateful for that. Tucasa started here in 1989, so it's been about 38 years that it's been going on and it's just grown and grown and grown. Um, if I ever wondered why I took the job as executive director, it was um, answered the other day. I was thinking about it on, on my drive over here, how um, we had a woman show up from Colorado Springs. She had never left Colorado Springs. She grew up there, had lived there. Um, but she was in a horrible situation living with a, a man who was abusive verbally, but also um, he sold drugs and um, so he was very suspicious and he would keep his eye on her constantly and was very controlling. And so what she did one day all on her own was she figured out um, when he wasn't gonna be there. If he couldn't be there, he'd have someone to watch her. So she found like a 10 minute window, ran out and got into this car that she had that should not have been able to go more than maybe 10 miles an hour or 10 miles. Um, because it, the tires were worn out, the engine was really broken, her windshield completely shattered, and she started driving. She just drove uh, away, and she ended up in Alamosa, and she landed um, at the hospital, and they referred her to us, um, and she walked in, and the only thing she had was a little pudding cup that they had given her because she hadn't eaten. And so I tell this story just because what happened is that she what became a resident in one of our shelters and she started working right away on herself and working with our advocates program and is now working part time and has been able to um, get her car fixed enough that she can get around town but she walks as much as she as she can um, she was able to access services through social services and try to just help herself. She's, she's enrolled in the GED program at Trinidad State Junior College and she's just doing really, really well and she comes in to do her laundry in our facility and just says, 
thank you. you. You don't know what this means to me, and I have to stop and think about it because not ever having gone through that, it's easy for us, for, for me to say, oh, that happens to someone else, or I've, it, it's, you know, again, all the questions about, well, yeah, why didn't you leave sooner? Um, so it's, I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to be a part of such an amazing program that helps, and that's just one story. Um, in 2016, Tukasa helped out probably about 20 to 30 people a month, and that's men, women, and children who came through, they either stayed at the shelter or they received advocacy services um, with an advocate going with them to court or helping them get a birth certificate or there's there's just a lot of services. We don't charge victims for any of the anything we do and so we're dependent on grants and and donations from the public. And so we've been really lucky also to be in a community where People are just so giving and willing to help out always. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up to you is that October, for 30 years, the month of October has been recognized as National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I know that you have supported that throughout the years. And uh, this year, Mayor Lucero is going to do a proclamation proclaiming it to be the month of uh, domestic violence awareness. That's going to be on October 2nd, right here, because we're also doing an art show, and the art will be hanging here at the library for the month of October, and so that'll be the opening um, to that is the proclamation, and I hope that all of you can, can be there as well. Um, we have a lot of activities planned that are meant to bring awareness to the community about what domestic violence is. There's so many misconceptions out there. A lot of times we blame the victim and say, well, why didn't you just shut your mouth? Or why did you make the person mad? Or, um, and there's a lot of reasons that people start hitting them, but, but it's mostly all about power, it's about control. We want to create a community where people live violence free where they don't have to watch for that 10 minute window so that they can jump in their ratty old car and, and drive away. And so part of the, one of the things that we're doing is approaching local businesses to donate parts of their proce uh, proceeds for maybe one day in the month. And so the, the wet paintbrush is going to sponsor a night of painting and uh, donate most of the fee to, to CASA, which is really going to help us out a lot. Um, local restaurants and bars are going to donate pro proceeds from a, a night here and there also just to bring that in. There's things that you can do as well. I have brought a few things for the council, um, for each of you, and I can leave them um, with Ms. Brooks. This is an action card for you that just says, these are some things that you can do throughout the month. Um, you know, with the um, current state of social media, a lot of things are always posted on Facebook and and on uh, websites. Um, so some of these were are um, like October nineteenth is wear purple, wear purple, so you can wear purple that day. I also have some little bags that have a, a purple ribbon for each of you and a little card just to remind you that it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, we have a 5K run on October 28th that's going to originate here at Cole Park and go around. We're, we're going to have the park. We're going to set up an obstacle course. It's a zombie run, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We encourage people to dress as zombies when they run. With the money that we make from that, none of it's going to actually come to, 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 to CASA because we want to give back. We have so much support, and, a, and it comes from law enforcement. Um, a lot of times, and so one of the th what we're doing the 5K run for is to raise money so that we can purchase what are called Lumicams, and they're new specialized cameras that law enforcement or EMTs, hospitals can use when a person has been strangled, because a lot of times once that happens, the bruises don't show up right away, and so officers are, are un, just not able to charge people or to treat um, the victim appropriately. These cameras allow them to take a picture, and it, 
if there's any bruising or if there was there was strangulation, it'll show up right away. And so we decided that we're going to purchase those for law enforcement throughout the valley. And that's our way of saying thank you for, for all of the support you give us. And so um, those are just some of the things we're going to do. I appreciate, again, your support, your willingness to, to do a proclamation. Um, if any of you have any questions about anything, I'd be happy to answer. Councillor Daniel. Well, thank, thank you, Mayor. Patty, thank you so much um, for you being there. I think you're, you're providing great leadership, so thank you for joining the team. Thank um, you. Is, and I, I want, I want to, people to be able to know the hotline number and how to access those services and, and things like that. So can you, just so Ruth can put it in the article and everything, um, give people the number, and I still have it memorized, but, um, <laughs> and, and make sure that they know how to access your services and all the different services you provide, because I think to CASA, we always think about domestic violence, but you do so much more than that. That's right, Christina, thank you so much, and thanks for the kind words. Um, our phone number, our hotline number, and our general number is 719-589-2465. If anyone calls that number during the day, a staff member at Tucasa will answer it, and you will have a live person answer it. We don't have a way to, um, to, we don't we don't have the option of if you need this person press one if you need that person press two so someone will always answer um, after 4:30 from 4:30 p.m. until 8:30 the next morning we have a hotline so we have um, hotline volunteers who take the phone every night and so if someone calls that number a hotline volunteer will answer it and make sure that they're given services. Um, and some of the other things that we provide are, you know, we're not dealing just with domestic violence. We're dealing with financial violence, which is when somebody withholds money from people. Um, there has been a rise in the, in the incidence of human trafficking in the San Luis Valley, which is really interesting. And it's not just for sex, it's for labor. So there's people who are coming through and we're able to recognize when they might be essentially held hostage by someone who's forcing them to go out and, and sell magazines or sell bread or something. And really, they're, they're, um, maybe they're paying back a, a drug debt or something. So we have a rise in human trafficking. We also help victims of stalking. We help victims of elder abuse. Um, we Our advocacy program is designed to give power back to the victim and to let them know that it's not their fault and that we're there for them. We don't make any judgments about whether, what, what they should do. It, it, you know, the statistics show that it takes a woman, or I should say a victim, an average of seven times to leave and come back and leave and come back to ultimately leave if he or she's able to. And so, um, you know, we do that. The Children's Advocacy Center is something that's new to, to, to CASA. We provide forensic interviewers or interviews of children who have been sexually abused. And the idea behind the Children's Advocacy Center is that it, a child comes to our center which is comfortable and it's a family environment and it's, it's all about them and they tell their story to one person. We have another room where law enforcement and social services are able to watch that. And so the child has to tell the story just one time. And they never have to see a police officer. They never have to see anybody else that to them might be really scary. Um, and then in some instances, the, the child doesn't have to testify in court either and face the, the person who may have been abusing them. And so we um, conduct maybe five to 10 interviews a month at our Children's Advocacy Center. And we have two forensic interviewers right now. Um, so. Yeah, those are the two major parts of what we do, so sure. Thank you, uh, Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Mayor. Patty, thank you for what you do and your staff. They do a wonderful job. Um, one night, really late, probably midnight, I get a phone call from a lady who calls me on my cell phone because I guess it's public on uh, information on the city's website. She tells me that she was abused by um, her spouse. It, it was a, an awakening moment. Um, 
All I did is I had a whole lot of thoughts running through my head and the lady said, don't tell me to call the police because I don't want to press charges. Now, I'm wanting to help and fortunately for me, what happened was is I remember getting an opportunity to talk with some of your staff and to talk with you. I was able to direct that lady uh, to your to CASA service program and hopefully she was able to get the help that she needed. What you do is so important in our community. Uh, another case, I often, as I go around the community, when I meet someone new, I ask them, what, what brought you to Alamosa? I met another lady and she said, you won't believe my story. And I said, well, I'm listening. She says, well, I was in a domestic violence situation, abusive husband, and I had to come to Tucasa. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be alive today, nor would my kids be alive today. She is now a very productive citizen in Alamosa doing great things and her kids are attending our schools. Keep doing what you're doing because it's making a, a big difference. The thing I like about your Children's Advocacy Center is that the, the kids that go through that trauma of abuse, they don't have to continue to go through it and relive it over and over. They can tell their story one time and the law enforcement agencies and everyone else who's involved could have an opportunity to see that kid tell their story. So what you're doing is important. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hensley. <clears throat> so this is really very close to my heart. Um, domestic violence definitely has touched my life. And it's one of those things where um, you make such a difference and your group makes such a difference. Um, I have people close to me that definitely have been involved with the advocacy part of it. Um, and it's been a huge support to them. I also, being at Adams State, have a few, exam a few situations where I've had students come to me and have been in situations. And in my office, we will pick up the phone and call and start the process going. And each time somebody's always picked up the phone, which boy, does that make a difference? Sometimes when you call places and they say press one for this or press two, and then you keep pressing zero, trying to just get to somebody to talk to. So that in itself, just having it be very easy to start that process. Um, and I know three of them in particular, this has been in the last six years or so, but three of them in particular, it made a huge difference for them and they came back um, to tell me, you know, how much better they're doing because of it and stuff. So hats off to you. I just, anything we can do, I know anything I can do personally, I think it's an awesome program that we have here and please keep it up and thank you for all you do. All right, thank you. Councilor Grego. Patricia, thank you for all you do. Uh, you gave us the phone number. Where is Tucasa located at? I, did you recently move or? Well, they moved maybe seven years ago. It's okay. not something that we publicize oh, because okay. of the okay. safety issues. Oh, right. I can let you know that, okay. you know, just... it's not more public. I think a lot of people do know, but okay. because of safety issues. Um, See, it's good to know that. I, I, I do know <laughs> that, so I mm -hmm. appreciate that. And uh, like I said, the phone, the phone number is probably good enough. So thank you for all you do. Okay, yeah. thank you. Absolutely. Um, Lisa, you know, it's, uh, I, I think they've covered it. So uh, I will be there on October 7th. Okay. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very Mayor. much for your presentation. All righty. And may I approach to. Absolutely, um, please. Sometimes I think I'm in court still. <laughs> We'll now move on to uh, business brought forward by our city staff, Public Works. Pat is approaching. We have a public hearing and second reading on ordinance number 28-17, an ordinance vacating a portion of Mullins Avenue at its intersection with Murphy Drive, located in Alamosa, Colorado. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, sir. Again, this is the second time you've seen this. Um, this is basically the vacation of the right-of-way that that was that was vacated when we realigned Mullins Avenue uh, as you know the the street now curves and goes over what was the front yard of the church they donated that property for the street and now when we vacate 
that right of way that was occupied by the street, um, half of that right of way will go to the church and half will go to the adjoiner on the south. Very good. Councillor, uh, anyone have any questions of Pat? Have you seen this before? Oh, very good. So with that, Pat, I will open the pu uh, public hearing on ordinance number 28-17. Is there anyone in the audience wish wishing to speak for or against this ordinance? If there is, please approach the podium. Make your wishes known. Seeing no one, Pat, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to council for a uh, decision or further discussion. Councilor Daniel. Um, Mayor, if there's no other discussion, I move that we approve upon second reading ordinance number 28-2017, vacating a portion of Mullins Avenue at its intersection with Murphy Drive. Councilor Grego. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. And so then we will move on to a request of Black and VTech as an agent of Verizon Wireless for the expansion of an existing permitted use by special review for the installation of Verizon Wireless communication antennas on the existing Viero Tower near the Villa Mall. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is the first real example of co-location that we've seen in the city since we passed that new ordinance uh, early last year. What this is, is Verizon Wireless going on a Viero-owned tower, the, the tower out by Villa Mall. Uh, Verizon Wireless wants to install some, some antennas at the 35-foot level on the tower. We have support from the owners of the Villa Mall who are excited about uh, densifying their Verizon service in the Villa Mall. Um, and staff doesn't feel that uh, the installation at that low level on the tower is gonna have, gonna have a big aesthetic impact. So the Planning Commission recommended unanimously to approve this uh, expansion. And I am bringing that recommendation to you. Thank you, Pat. We have any questions of Pat? Councillor Griego? Uh, I don't have any questions. I, Go ahead. Um, th thank you, Councillor Griego. So Verizon's the only one that has uh, approached us, and I've just been noticing, because I've been looking at some different things when I go to communities and stuff, our towers are pretty not attractive. Um, and so do, do we anticipate more wireless providers doing this on the same tower? Viero, is Viero open for that? And, and how is there a plan for making them look less like towers <laughs> not well, less what, like you know what i mean yeah well, what, the new ordinance that, that that you approved requires before anybody can come to public works and request a permit for a new tower they have to show us that they've made an effort to co-locate so that's that's one of the requirements of the application um, secondly in the in the in the in the ordinance we we ask them to try to use anything anything high that already exists um, make an agreement with a church with a steeple use use uh, our water towers use existing towers use everything as far as making the towers look less like towers I wish we had trees like in Castle Pines, you know, you drive down the interstate and you see that, you know, those are those are great. But if we did that here, I think they'd stand out more than the tower. Uh, so it's it's we do what we can to try to camouflage them and and try to keep the numbers down as best we can. Thank you. I appreciate that, Pat. I just I've just been noticing them because yeah. I've been looking, not because they stuck out, but because I've been mm -hmm. looking. So thank you, Councilor Grego. Uh, if there's no further questions, I'll go ahead and make the motion that. Uh, the request of Black and, how do you say it, Vitech? Black and, Black and Beach. Beach, for the expansion of the existing permitted use. I second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. We now have a request of Black and Beach 
uh, as an agent of AT&T for the expansion of an existing permitted use by special review for the removal of four omni antennas and the addition of three panel antennas and three remote radio heads on the city-owned Craft Water Tower. Pat? Thank you, sir. Um, and just in a little background, Black & Veatch is one of the largest engineering firms in the world, and they have found a niche handling these kinds of requests for telecommunications companies because they are so prevalent. There, we get, we get a lot of these requests, and we're a small town, so I can only imagine some of the bigger cities. Um, this request, we, you see, um, if they remove four and add six, they're adding two antennas in aggregate on the craft tower. Uh, one thing, we're, you know, we're the planning commission has recommended unanimously to approve this. Um, but one thing we want to bring to council's attention is that currently. Our contract with AT&T um, limits them to five antennas. This will, this will make a total of six. So what we're going to do, what we planned on doing, is making them aware of that fact. Um, when, the, when the contract was created uh, years ago, it wasn't even with AT&T. I can't remember who the company was. Altel. So, um, we are going to communicate to AT&T that this does put them over their put them over their contractual limit, and that when the time comes to renegotiate this contract, um, we will we will be asking for an increase in lease fees, and any any request to expand the the number beyond this prior to the renegotiation of that contract will trigger will trigger that increase. So we just wanted to wanted to make you aware of that. And I think part of the other background information is it took so long to finish the contract that we just did, um, and it was it was fairly painful. So um, and with that, it, it's also something that we feel that there is room, and we're okay with that one additional item. Councillor Daniel. Thank you. When does the current contract that was when does it expire? Yeah, I think it's 2028 or something like that. 2028. It it's, it has annual increases built into it, and things like that. So it's um, if the, if they at this point if they if they come and want to add more to the tower, we either we either take an, a new look at that at that contract or they remove something in its place. Very good. Are there any further questions or comments? Councillor Daniel. Thank you. Um, Mayor, I move that we uh, approve the requested expansion of the existing permitted use by special review as per the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Thank you, Councillor Hensley. I'll second. Got a motion to second. Is there any further discussion on the request by Black and Vish? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Hawley. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. We'll move on to fire. Chief, thank you for being here. We have a public hearing and second reading on ordinance number 27-17 and an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with Adams State University to provide fire protection services. Chief? Mayor, Council, uh, there again, this is the second time on this one. So uh, basically it's an MOU between us and Adams State, which clarifies our responsibilities and their responsibilities in terms of re emergency response, code enforcement, uh, code compliance, hazmat response, and that kind of thing. So uh, basically doesn't change anything that's been going on that we've had in place for the last few years. It just puts it into writing. Thank you, Chief. And with that, I will open the public hearing on ordinance number 27-2017. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, please approach the podium. Make your wishes known. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing on ordinance number 27-2017 and bring it back to Council for further discussion or a decision. Councilor Griego. If there's no further questions, I'll make the motion we approve ordinance number 27-2017. Councilor Hensley? I second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Hawley? 
The motion carried unanimously. We'll then move on to a public hearing and second reading on ordinance number 26-2017, an ordinance amending sections 7-1, 7-36, and 7-37, and deleting sections 7-38 through 7-40 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Alamosa, adopting the NFPA code, codes 30 and 30, A, relating to flammable liquids and amending Alamosa's Code of Ordinances concerning the storage of flammable liquids. Chief? Mayor, thank you, sir. The, uh, this basically is updating our 1964 ordinance on the flammable liquid storage and brings it more in line with current codes that we have adopted. Also, the NFPA 30 and 30A are new to us in terms of adoption, but it does cover the storage capabilities or the containers and that kind of thing as far as the flammable liquids are concerned. It does allow for above ground tanks for heating oil purposes in residential areas. Other than that, it's limited to 10, 10 gallons above ground from the previous five gallons. Um, then the other part of it is that it is allowed in uh, certain zoning districts and it is by a permit basis. Thank you, Chief. So with that, I will open the public hearing on ordinance number 26-2017. There's anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, please approach the podium and make your wishes known. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing on ordinance number 26-2017, bring it back to council for a decision or a further discussion. Councilor Daniel. Um, Mayor, if there's no further discussion, I move that we approve ordinance number 26-2017. Councilor Hensley. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Hawley. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Ms. Heather. Legal, we've got a public hearing and second reading on ordinance number 24-17, an ordinance further extending the temporary moratorium on the placement of certain manufactured homes within the city of Alamosa other than in mobile home parks through December the 31st of 2017. Council, this is the second reading and public hearing on this extension, so you've seen it before, and you've also seen it before when the moratorium was initially imposed. When that happened, we were uh, maybe too optimistic about how long it would take us to get our revised de development code in place, and we were trying to extend the moratorium to allow us to integrate this into the development code. We have the development code nearing final form. It should be reaching you in your second meeting in October uh, for its first review and then probably final reading in, in the second meeting in November. So this extends the existing moratorium on manufactured homes in order to be able to dovetail those issues with the development code. Thank you, Councilor. And so with that, I will open the public hearing on ordinance number 24-2017. There's anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, please approach the podium and make your wishes known. In no one, I will close the public hearing on ordinance number 24-2017 and bring it to council for further discussion or a decision. Councillor Hensley. If there's no further discussion, I move to approve the extension of the temporary moratorium ordinance. Councillor Daniel. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Hawley. The motion carried unanimously. We'll now move on to City Manager Legal and Ms. Heather. We've got a public hearing and second reading on ordinance number 25-2017, an ordinance extending the temporary moratorium on the establishment of marijuana consumption clubs through May the 1st of 2018. Ms. Heather. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, similar to the previous issue, this is an extension of an existing moratorium. Um, the purpose for this extension to May 1st is to dovetail with a potential moratorium on um, other marijuana facilities should there be a successful vote in November. Um, the philosophy behind this is that should those, depending on how that vote goes, might provide insight to council on how you may feel about this other type of use, which is a club. And so we wanted to give council time to, to see how that went. If it is a successful vote, um, we also wanted council to have time to be able to set up appropriate regulations, um, zoning code requirements, potential limitations, anything like that. And those discussions probably would dovetail well with what you would anticipate for this as well. So the this is just to try to bring all those issues into alignment from a time frame perspective and um, just handle it in the, the most transparent and responsible manner possible. Thank you, Heather. So with that, I will um, open the public hearing on ordinance number 25-2017. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, please approach the podium, make your wishes known. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing on ordinance number 25-2017 and bring it to council for a decision or further discussion. Councilor Diego. If there's no further questions, I'll make a motion to approve uh, ordinance number 20-2017. 25. 20. That's fine. 25? I second. We've got a motion and a second on ordinance number 25-2017. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. We also have a first reading on ordinance number 29-2017, an ordinance establishing a temporary moratorium on the establishment of medical and retail marijuana stores through May the 1st, 2018. Councilor? Council, the city manager alluded to this when she was talking about the marijuana club moratorium. This moratorium will uh, enable council to obtain the results of the November election with respect to those two citizen initiated petitions for legalization of retail and or medical marijuana. In the event that those pass, it will be necessary for council to enact various rules and regulations that would govern how those uh, facilities may be operated and where they may be located. So certainly zoning regulations, licensing regulations, um, other kinds of control regulations. And just as an FYI, uh, four members of city staff will be attending the marijuana regulatory symposium that's being hosted by Denver uh, in October to try to gain some insight from other communities' experience with these issues uh, in the event that we do need to propose uh, regulation for you to consider. So this moratorium will only go into effect in the event that the questions pass in November. It will go into effect immediately um, should they pass and it will dovetail with uh, the other marijuana consumption club moratorium. Hopefully we will have a resolution of the any zoning and regulatory issues that we need to bring to you for your consideration, such that those may be enacted by uh, May of 2018. That's why the moratorium goes through May of, to May 1st of 2018. I think it's also important to note that um, should we move quickly on that, we can always end the moratorium sooner. Um, additionally, the ordinance as, as drafted by the city attorney allows for people to submit applications during the moratorium period of time. Um, we have received at least one um, interested individual and, and we've made sure to include them with the copy of the proposed ordinance um, and to make them aware that there could be regulations that also impact the location of these facilities as well. So we wanted to make sure that everyone has all the information as, that's available. Just to, to clarify on that point, the city will not accept any applications right now 
because it's right now totally marijuana different. facilities are prohibited within the city other than the testing facilities. Um, but the city and, and the club, we, we are accepting them during the moratorium. But this, so the city will not accept any applications at all unless and until the questions pass, in which case the moratorium does provide for accepting those. Thank you. Councillor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have a question. Um, one of the things that I've been concerned about both, and I've mentioned it about our liquor outlets as well as my concern for marijuana outlets should that pass, is the density based on our population. So that's not listed anywhere in the ordinance. It does talk about the number, but it doesn't talk about using density as a uh, ratio to look at. And I would be curious at the symposium if that's something people use, and if we could at least add something in here that should it be available information that we include that. So it's like liquor outlet density to the population we have. So how many outlets to serve our population would be necessary? Is it two, is it four, is it obviously probably not 28? Correct me if I'm wrong. So yes, we'll definitely be looking for all of those best practices okay. of, of if, if, if council is so inclined to want to have those kinds of limitations, is it per population, is it geographic? What's the, the best way to do that? So we will be looking at that. I'm not sure this language has to be fully exhaustive okay. of what we're going to be looking at. Um, those discussions can range all over the okay. place. This is just to make sure people have enough of an idea of what you guys might consider um, to, to be transparent. But it doesn't have to be exhaustive in its language. Thank you. I just do think that's an important thing that we didn't look at, any community didn't look at with alcohol outlet density. And so I do think it's an important factor. Very good. Thank you. Any further discussion? Council? I'll entertain a motion. Councilor Gagel? If there's no further questions, on first reading, I'll, put, I'll move that we approve Ordinance 29 2017 and set it for a public hearing on uh, what is that, October 4 at 7 o'clock or soon thereafter. Councillor Hensley. I'll second. Got a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, start voting, please. Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. We'll move on to committee reports. Who has a committee report? Councillor Hensley. I did go to the marketing board meeting last Thursday. Um, kind of the primary things that uh, they're doing very well. Uh, so money's coming in because of a great year in regards to tourism and people staying in hotels, things like that. And the museum board uh, made a, I, I felt a very good presentation on game plans going forward, some ideas. Um, Jeff Owsley helped them quite a bit with that and I thought that was very, very well done. So that was it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The tree board did not meet in September. It was canceled, so we're hoping to meet um, at the next regularly scheduled meeting. And the, I will be attending a broadband conference on Friday. So I'll bring back updates from that. Thank you. Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, attended the DRG uh, board meeting this past week, and um, I'm really happy to say that they're doing a wonderful job of deploying uh, the funding that they have uh, set aside for businesses in our community and throughout the San Luis Valley. Um, their team is really getting uh, more and more active in the community, reaching out to uh, current business owners, uh, trying to let them know about the resources that are available uh, to those businesses. And in turn, what's happening is, is we're seeing um, a greater job of retention in a lot of our smaller businesses. So they are moving forward. The executive director, I think he's, he's almost been there a year now and you can start seeing some of the results, results of his uh, leadership. Thank you, Council. I attended the uh, annual mayor's summit. Uh, a lot of great information there, um, but I won't make it very long. What I did find very interesting was uh, what was new in law enforcement, and obviously they know Chief Oaks and some of the good work that he's been doing here. Rick Brandt, Chief of Police from the city of Evans, was one of the pre presenters, as well as Nicole Nicoletta, Mayor of Manitou Springs, and Renee Bullock, who is a Mayor Pro Tem from Commerce City. But one of the interesting things that uh, 
I thought I wanted to share with you more than anything else is that um, uh, there was crime prevention through environmental design. They talked about uh, doing away with uh, access to areas that are heavily populated by drug people, that kind of thing. And one of the things that I also thought was interesting was that uh, uh, every once in a while they'll have police officers walking specific neighborhoods just to get to know the people and get to know the uh, children and the issues. And just one specific officer does that in a specific area. They get to know him and he gets to know them. And, and I don't know, there's this symbiotic kind of relationship between the police department, which really enhances the job that they do out in the community. But I found that very interesting. Um, a lot of great information. Um, you know, there are strengths in working together, which we did this evening with our um, uh, folks at ACEDC. I, I think it's important for us to interact that way. Um, they talked about how to help your uh, municipality grow and prosper. Talked about the financial thicket and Tabor and, and those kind of things. So I, I did get a lot of interesting information. I will put it in the reading file for us to, to peruse at, at your leisure. Anyway, uh, that was a, it was a great summit and, and I, I appreciate uh, uh, being asked to go to those things. Anyway, so we'll go on to anyone else. Sorry. We'll go on to staff announcements. Ms. Heather. Thank you, Mayor. I have a few, and then we have some staff as well that, that have some updates. Um, we were able to hire an intern with the grant that we received for um, our healthcare sector partnership. Um, Ms. Rachel Valdez has joined our team, so if you see her face in our office, um, she is working on our healthcare sector efforts and, and specifically workforce development and um, the talent pipeline. I was fortunate to be able to attend a, a mini conference for local foods, local places. It began Monday night and, and all day yesterday. Um, it, it, we were very fortunate to be selected from across the nation. It was only um, a small percentage that were selected in, in the resources and technical expertise in the room from federal programming and some state programming to, to walk the participants through was, was very positive. Um, I think there's a lot of excitement for Alamosa. There's a lot of excitement for enhancing um, the economic vitality and, and one way to do that is um, growing our local foods and, and having better access to it and, and getting it into some of our local businesses as well. So um, there's some action plans that will be coming out of that and will be finessed. And the other part is um, what I find nice is, is there's consistency with what we heard with the comp plan. And I think that's always good from a city perspective is when you have these different types of outreaches, when there is consistency um, and, and it's reassuring to know that we're putting resources in the direction that the, the residents have spoken. And so there's a lot of focus on the downtown. There's a lot of excitement over some of the visions that were presented through the comp plan for revitalization of downtown. And that was another part of it. So it was both local foods and downtown. So it was a very exciting discussion and a lot of energized people. Um, Andy and, and Pat and myself have had many meetings with Trust for Public Lands. They are working with the farm park and us in um, SLV Go on development of the river corridor. We will be unveiling um, a public process to try to really dig down more into what the vision is for the river, um, what the priorities are, what that should look like, and, and there's been some invitations going out, and um, we're very hopeful that the community will participate. I'm, I'm wanting to make sure we have both youth involvement, senior center, um, seniors involvement, and then business involvement as well as different um, neighborhoods within our community. So hopefully we'll get some good representation on that outreach. And then I wanted to let council know that um, Dwayne, the, or the chief, Pat and I did meet with um, 
some representatives from La Puente and to talk about maybe the structure of what discussions we want to have and what council hears from the community and those types of things. You might recall while we had um, a budget meeting last week, they did have a neighborhood meeting. I think a lot of um, the comments that were made from the, the neighborhood are comments that you're hearing as well and were comments and, and thoughts that we shared with some of the La Puente staff. We're looking at maybe wanting to set up um, a meeting with council and the board, maybe have it facilitated. So we're thinking through some of those details. Um, so I want to let you know that that's still going on. Um, additionally, they invited the chief and I to sit on the panel that they have for next week. Um, it is Tuesday the 25th at 7 o'clock at McDaniels Hall, room 104. Um, this is a panel, a panel that they've put together for their week of hope. Um, and so just from an FYI perspective, um, we're, we're going to sit on that and, and we'll provide whatever the city perspective is and answer any city questions. But beyond that, we're, we're not much involved in the organization of it or, or how that's, that's being handled. But we will be there during that time. Can, can you tell us the date and time one more time? I'm sorry. Tuesday the 26th. Okay. Well, it's Tuesday the 26th. The city attorney is just corrected me. So it's next Tuesday um, at 7 at McDaniels Hall, room 104. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to the chief. Thank you, Good evening, chief. Council. I just have a couple things, updates on for you tonight. Uh, the first one is you all saw my press release that I sent out last night and uh, the article that Ruth had in today's paper, if you're able to read that. <clears throat> we were looking for a subject um, as a result of an incident that occurred on Monday night on Bell Avenue. Um, I'm happy to report to you that we did capture him this afternoon at about 4.30. Uh, we had a citizen that recognized him from the picture and the article in the paper and was able to report it to us and we were successfully able to take him into custody uh, without incident, no harm to him or the officers involved. So um, pretty quick. It was. Uh, it was a very busy couple days with that incident going on. Uh, the, other, the other update I'd like to give you is the homeless camps, as Councilor Grego constantly brings up to us and has concerns for, which, which is rightfully so. Um, <clears throat> we've been able to identify a lot of homeless camps that are at the east side of 6th Street uh, between the railroad tracks and the dike area. Uh, our officers nightly are going down there meeting with those people, informing them that uh, of the municipal code that prohibits them from camping and uh, helping them move to safe, safe locations back to La Puente or wherever they need to move on to. Um, but we are working diligently to um, mediate those problems or issues within our community as far as people camping. Um, and there are some that are still camping in vehicles that we continuously address as well. And we, uh, matter of fact, Captain Anderson and I uh, address that with two people today sleeping in a car. So, any questions on either topic? Councilor Grego? I had one. Uh, city manager talked about the meeting that they had last week with the, uh, the people with La Puente. One of the topics they talked about was a vagrancy ordinance. Apparently, we don't have one of those. Is that something that we should address, or is that, or do we have one, or? Uh, um, I'll defer to the city attorney, but um, I, I think that we we could probably address that, yes. Uh, well, we do have the no camping ordinance. Vagrancy, or we had it as part of our panhandling ordinance. We had a no loitering, and we do actually have a no loitering ordinance. We have to be careful on uh, constitutional freedom of assembly. Sure issues, freedom of travel and freedom of assembly issues. I believe that we likely have as strong an ordinance or ordinances in place that would address that as we can, um, but we can, we can take a look if there's any particular issues that are sliding through our ordinance structure. We can take a look at shoring those up, and I can certainly talk with the chief about whether he thinks he has the ordinance tools that are necessary to address the issues that we have. Okay, thank you very much. Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief, thank you very much. Um, 
With these contacts that you're having with the people who obviously are homeless and have other other things going on, how, how is it being received by them? Are they feeling um, supported? Are they getting fresh? Like, is it, is it going well or is it is it not going well? I'm not the one out there, so I can't say how their attitudes are, but there's been no report of conflicts. Okay. Um, we we're providing them with trash bags to help clean up the areas that they are living in, and uh, they're being very cooperative with that. So I, I would assume that um, they're being receptive to our discussions that we're having with them. And like I said, they're cleaning up their trash, and you know we are picking up those trash bags, okay. um, and when they leave them out for us. So Thank we're trying to work with them and direct them to any resources that they're in need of. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I also appreciate the city attorney's comments. I'd, I'd like us to be really careful as a council um, about how we we talk about this issue and and how I, I know our police are super respectful and I, I appreciate that because not all police forces are. Um, and so, you know, we really need to make sure we're still a welcoming city and we're still allowing people, even when they, they struggle and they have, they have challenges. And so I, I think it's a balance that we have to strike and I think we're trying to do that. So I appreciate everybody working for that balance. Councilor Grego? And if I may, and I totally agree with you, Councilor Daniels, uh, we, if anything we can do for homeless, we're there to help them, 100%. But what we're seeing out there is we're seeing people that are using the homeless and they're coming into our community and bringing drugs or robbing people. And we need to correct that some way, and I don't know how you do it. But to use the homeless shelter and everything as a crutch to come into our community and to rob us and, and bring drugs, there's gotta be a way to stop that. There's no way, there's, I don't want to send a message that I'm against homeless. If anything I can do, I, I help La Puente any way I can, but they need to find out a, a way how to approach it, you know, and, and if it means communication with our police and our, our staff and us to find a way, how do we work together to, for the, to help the, 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 the home there? Because it does a great deal for the people who really need it. But if you have people that are abusing it, and it, it only hurts the, the people that really need it. So, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, first thing, after 35 years, Parks Superintendent Solomon Archuleta is retiring. Uh, this is big news when you look around at our approximately 20 recreational facilities. I, I do an inventory of that you know, often in my head and I just think how much his stamp is on just about every one of them from creation to maintaining to expanding. And um, so a lot of gratitude to Solomon. If you see him, he doesn't want to party or anything. You know, he, he wants to kind of go out kind of quiet, but um, lots of gratitude to Solomon and he'll be missed. And, you know, we'll, we'll start that process of, of looking to replace him. But that was big news I wanted to share with you. Um, Couple of projects we got going, the archery range. Uh, we've plotted the location. We're working with Joshua, the Eagle Scout. We're awaiting a formal request. I don't know if you remember, last time we were here with him, he kind of sprung on us a little bit that maybe we would chip in. We think we'll be able to chip in with him on some more durable edging, but I've asked for a little bit more uh, formal documentation on that, but it's moving right along. The location has been staked and he's working with parks and stuff to get that installed. Kind of similar news with the dog park at Blanca Vista. The guys have started putting up the fencing. We're awaiting some gating materials, but that's moving right along and we'll certainly let you know when we're ready for a ribbon cutting or, or something. Um, what else do I have? The ice rink, construction's moving right along, exciting stuff. Um, I don't know if any of you are Avalanche fans, but Last night, uh, they interviewed the director of Colorado Amateur Hockey Association, who the CAHA, as it's known, gave us $20,000 to their project. So they contacted me and wanted a little blurb on the project and some photos, and Frazier, too, a similar project. Well, they aired our 
our photos and kind of talked about the project and it was um, on Altitude TV, the Avalanche Network, and I was, you know, I was really excited Very to good. see that. So we're getting a little bit of free promotion and they're excited and it was about how Caja is growing the game across the state and investing in, you know, rural areas like ours. So that was pretty cool to see. I invite you guys to come over. The steel's going up on the building. So um, excitement's building, you know, with any major project, there's little issues. And I don't know if Pat's going to speak to them, but we're moving, moving through them and working, working through it. So that's all I got, I think. Very good. Councillor Daniel. Uh, thank you. Uh, Andy, thanks so much for everything. Is there a way we can get that blurb as a link on our website? Will they give us the rights to that? I, you know, I was wondering that. I think somebody took a phone video of their TV and <laughs> it's going to share it with Heather and okay. see what we can come up with. That would be, that would be really It was neat. pretty cool, yes. Um, I will try. Awesome. Thank and then you. the other thing, um, we got to meet two of Pat's staff today. And I know during the summer when you were super, super swamped, yeah. some yeah. positions changed over there. Yes. And so I was just wondering if you would be willing to bring your new team and their you know, promotions to, to us soon. Oh, most certainly. I'll thank bring you. them in here. Awesome. Thank okay. you. Very good. Andy Good. Sir Coleman. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I got an opportunity to go out there yesterday, and I just parked my truck right in the front of the uh, multipurpose center. And it was um, surreal, I mean, just to see it all come a reality. And, and I'm so excited. And just looking at the shell, the, the partial shell right there is getting me so excited about hockey. So, and the other thing I liked was um, when I drove up and I saw the banner on the fence of one of our local contractors, uh, I believe it was all con construction. And just thinking about how many people they employ and the monies that we're putting back into the community by this big, huge project. It was, um, I guess, a real good feeling that day, yesterday. Keep it up. Well, thank you. I get that feeling every time I get to pull in there at 8 a.m., but thank you. Councillor Griego. I, I do my walking over at the cemetery, and I see that that building is really coming out nice. They're putting that color on it. It really yeah. looks great, you know. Yeah. Is that on schedule or? It is on schedule. We haven't set an actual opening date. We were shooting for late October, but they've been doing a good job staying on schedule there. And we're, uh, you know, the parks guys are so busy. They're not one to be like show their excitement for it. But man, they're gonna they're gonna be able to be a little more efficient it's a building. in that space. And I'm, ex you know, just as excited for them as as they are. So, yeah. Thank you, Andy. Uh, <clears throat> I know we've taken, uh, we're taking photographs as we go along. We I are. appreciate that. You know, the other day I was looking for a photo album somewhere. They're hard to find anymore. <laughs> 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 anyway, thank you, okay. Andy. Appreciate it. Thank you. As Pat comes up, I'll remind you of some update, upcoming meetings. Um, September 25th which is the Monday, is the CML district meeting in La Jara. And then October 2nd is our public outreach for the potential new park. And October 16th is the candidate forum. And backtracking a little bit, next Wednesday, September 27th, we will have the public outreach for, public, um, for budget input. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, sir. Uh, just real quick, an update on Update on First Street, we are moving along now that the utility companies have mostly gotten out of the way and let us do, let us do what we need to do. Uh, we hope to be paving the first part of the week after next. That's, our, that's our, our goal right now. We have hauled about 80 tons of glass into the street that we've crushed at the recycle center. So we're, we're using our own material from the recycle center in the street. That's kind of that's kind of fun. And uh, Second Street, we've gotten out of the groundwater, so they're starting to make much better time on that project. And Andy has told you about the multi-purpose facility and the parks building. Very good. Thank you, Pat. Ms. Heather. Last one may be me. Uh, I alluded to the Marijuana Regulatory Symposium. That actually takes place on October 19th, which means I will miss 
the October 18th uh, City Council meeting. The only item that I know for sure is going to be on that agenda is the first reading of the development code that I mentioned. So I bring that up to inquire whether uh, you feel it necessary that we engage alternate counsel to be present or whether you're willing to fly naked on that one. I think it's important too to point out that Todd, the attorney who has been helping to draft the code and, and was at the work session, will be at the meeting as well. Oh, okay. Thank you. I feel comfortable with Todd answering some of those questions because it's only the first reading. So if something comes up, I feel like we could give it to you to address in between if that's okay. Sure. And, and of course, I am providing input. Um, I and others are providing input to Todd before this comes to you on first reading as well. Okay. That would be at your discretion then, Councillor. Okay, unless something really weird comes up, I will plan on not having substitute counsel for you. I, Thank I, you, Councillor Grego. I just want to voice my objection on that. I, I feel we should always have an attorney in hand, never know what happens. So I just want that for the record. That's fine. Anyone else? I, so I think that's why Eric is bringing it up. He's just, he, he's trying to get from counsel a direction on if he should find other legal counsel or not. Counsel? Counselor, Counselor Coleman? You know, being a part of it and, and, and listening to Todd over the past year or so, um, I think he's very aware of some of the issues that we can probably run into and um, this, I, I don't know if we would need Eric here for that because I think Todd could do a good job of clarifying everything for us if needed. I think Councillor Griego's concern probably doesn't have to do with, with that issue. It's we're sitting in a meeting and someone brings something up and it becomes a legal question. Um, very good. Yep. And, and I guess I, I will say that since it's Denver, Unlike many times when I'm not around, I will have uh, cell phone coverage, so you could always call me if you wanted. But I'm happy to, I think last time I was gone and I arranged for substitute counsel, we had Gordon Bosa do that. Um, and I'm happy to check with him or, or someone else. And that was going to be my question. I know Helen Sigmund used to sit in all the time, but now she's commissioner. Uh, so you do have people in, for the future that, that you, you're would be available to sit in in case you're, you're gone? I don't have any standing arrangements with anybody like I did with Helen, but I, there are certainly attorneys who are familiar with uh, municipal law who would okay. uh, be willing to cover that. It'd be nice to know. Thank you. Very good. Um, Councillor Daniel? Uh, thank you. Um, yes, so hearing Councillor Griego's concern, I think I'm not as concerned. I'm not concerned about the planning and zoning thing. Um, I do think that Todd is going to be able to help us with that. Um, I would say, though, if there's anything, is that the only thing we have on the agenda that night? Well, it's pretty far out. It's the only thing right. that I know of for sure right now. I'm sure there will be other things. So, on so the I would ask you to see if there's someone, I, if everybody's okay, to see if there is someone available. And should they not have that availability on that night, then we would have the option to call you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And uh, the attorney and I had a brief conversation specific to this uh, subject, and my feeling is if something super important comes up, we can always uh, move it up or move it back uh, as far as timing goes. But uh, uh, I don't think that would be a problem for us. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine if you're gone. Uh, Councillor Daniel? Oh. Cool. I have another question. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so then we're done with staff announcements? Well, no, I mean, I've got some people who are fine if I'm not here and some people who would prefer that there be somebody else here. So if, I, if we could just get a, uh, I don't need a motion or anything, but um, okay. consensus. yeah, a consensus. I mean, uh, who all thinks that we need to get substitute counsel in place? Okay, so I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Well, uh, that is, any more staff announcements? Can no, I, sir. Can I just ask a question? Is Counselor? that okay? Sorry, yeah. it's nothing huge. Really. You mentioned um, September 27th. Sorry. And you said that, could you remind, remind me what that was? Um, so I, I think 
Based on um, attending CML, I think probably two years ago, um, Councillor Vigil attended a session that um, had some best practices and how to involve the community with your budgeting process and, and those types of things. And so while this isn't necessarily going to be a best practice, we're trying to expand what our budget process is to include more public input. And so next Wednesday, the 27th at 6, we will be hosting a meeting that's just for public input. It's going to have a very brief time at the beginning to at least set a bit of a foundation of how big our budget is, the different types of funds, very, very limited, and then open it up for, for conversations. We actually meet tomorrow to go over the structure of the meeting, and we'll start advertising tomorrow. So is this a meeting where you're wanting, sort of like when we have work sessions, one that we should go to? It's up to council. <laughs> we weren't planning on you playing a role. Okay. But if you want to attend and, and just hear, and, and that, that you're more than welcome. It was going to be just more of a brief presentation to the public and then taking public input. I guess where I was going, this golf board changed their meeting till next Wednesday, so I was wondering sort of which way. So, okay, and we can talk later. I just, okay. I didn't get it, I wasn't quite sure what this was, so that helps a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will Thank say you. I'm definitely going to have department heads there so we can make sure to answer any types of questions that come up and, and all of that. Um, I'm not sure with this being our first year how many we're going to get. So it's it's kind of up in the air on for you to be able to make a decision. Thank you, Councillor Hensley. And with that, uh, Councillor uh, Vihill has is here. I will regress slightly. Do you have a committee report, Mr. Vihill? I do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, from the library, excuse me, from the HPAC, they met last week for a work session and um, to discuss some buildings and some things they might want to do to get on that, uh, on the historical list. Um, they wanted specifically for me to tell Holly if we, if, if you can push getting those, that spot filled, are those spots filled? If you could do that, that'd be great. Um, and Pat introduced us to a gentleman. I, I forgot his name, yeah, thanks. Dan Vaughn. You met him tonight, great. Uh, and yeah, so thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Vigil, and welcome. We uh, will now move on to council comment. Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Heather, I want to thank you for a very professional and um, I guess class job that you put on for the people who came in from out of town to talk about the uh, food coalition and local foods. It was so exciting to see so many people who were passionate about the future of our city and the direction that we can take. And um, I just appreciate you and your staff taking out the time to meet with that group of, of people and all of the uh, collaboration efforts that took place were huge. So keep up the great work that you all are doing. Councilor Vigil. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I just want to apologize to council for being late to this meeting. I really wanted to be there, but I had to be in center for <clears throat> uh, open house night. And I tried my best to get up here as, as fast as I could. Um, uh, what else? So I'm going to get caught up with Heather, but thank you for allowing me to be here. Absolutely. Thank you. And so we've got a need for two executive sessions this evening. Uh, I will entertain a motion. Mayor. Councilor Daniel. Thank you. Mayor, I move that we move into executive session pursuant to Colorado Revised Statutes 24-6-4024B to receive legal advice from the city attorney on two items. The first one concerning code enforcement in the airport parking lot. The second one concerning code enforcement and, the intermittent, and intermittent outdoor sales. Thank you, uh, Councilor Se Hensley. Second. Oh, sorry, Councilor Hill. Second. I've got a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? See none. Start voting, please. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. After our executive sessions, we will move back into regular session and no further business will be discussed. 